just want to be with you. Just want to be with you. He that dwelleth in that secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. King of glory. Come on, saints. I just want to be with you. Put a demand on God. I just want to be Put a demand on the Lord. Just ask him. King of glory. In his presence. There's fullness of joy. I just want to be with you. Lord, we want to see you. We want to see your glory. King of glory. Shama. Fill every pew. I just want to be with Fill you. Fill every person. I just want to be with Fill you. Fill us up to the top. I just want to be with you. And oh, how we love you. Hey. Oh, how we love you. Yes, Lord. Come on and clap your hands in the sanctuary. Come on and clap your hands in the sanctuary. The King of Kings and the Lord of Lords is here. Deacon Fields read the scripture in the hundredth book of Psalm and said, Lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be ye lifted up ye everlasting doors, and the King of glory, he shall come in. The King of glory is here. The King of kings is here. The Lord of glory is here. The Lord of glory is here. The King of kings is here. He's in our presence. He's in our presence. He's in our presence. You ought to give him thanks. You ought to give him praise. You ought to magnify the name of the Lord. The Lord is here with healing. The Lord is here with deliverance. The Lord is here with strength. The Lord is here with courage. The Lord is here with power. The Lord is here with faith. The Lord is here with blessings. The Lord is here in this place. Come on and give the Lord a praise. I just want to be with you. Hallelujah. Come on and give the Lord one more praise. Hallelujah. Hey, glory. We thank God for our praise and our worship team. We thank God for our musicians. We praise God for he is good and his mercy endureth forever. I just want to sing one more song. Can I take one more liberty? Hallelujah. Blessed, 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 blessed. Blessed, we're blessed, we're blessed, we're blessed in the city. Come on, we're, we're blessed. blessed in the city. Oh, yeah, we're blessed when we come, when we go. We cast down every stronghold, sickness and poverty must see. Oh, yeah, for the devil is defeated. We are blessed. We're blessed in the field. We're blessed when we come and when we go. We cast out every stronghold. Sickness and poverty must see. Oh, yeah. For the devil is defeated. We are blessed. Later in the midnight hour, God's going to turn around. It's called the work of your faith. Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, late, late in the midnight hour. Your God, God's gonna turn around. Your work is gonna work. How do you believe that on today? Late in the midnight hour. Your God, God's gonna turn around. Gonna work. It's gonna work in your favor. Late in the midnight hour, your God, God's gonna turn around. Gonna work. It's gonna work in your favor. Come on and give the Lord a praise. 
I believe God. I believe in his power. Do you believe God? Do you believe in his power? Do you make do you believe that he'll make a way out of no way? Do you believe that you are living testimony? Do you believe that you are his workmanship? Do you believe that the glory of God rests in your life? Do you believe that God is and that he's a rewarder to them that diligently seek him? Hallelujah. Do you believe that you blessed? Hey! Come on and give God one more praise. Thank you, Jesus. The Lord is good. And we certainly do thank and praise God for the service thus far. Amen. My soul rejoices in the Lord. Amen. Are you rejoicing in the Lord? It was a funny thing that on yesterday I was feeling uh, a, a, a great peace and a great calm. And I realized that that calm and that great peace was from the Lord. It's good to be in the presence of the Lord, and it's good to be in his presence, which is fullness of joy. And I thank God for that peace and that calm that I had felt in my spirit and my soul, because I realized that it was from the Lord. Come on, somebody, give God a praise that he'll send you peace in the midst of. Uh, no matter what you're going through, God will send you peace in the midst of. So as we move further with our our, our service on today, just by way of announcements, our Sunday school begins at 9.30 a.m., our morning worship begins at 11 a.m., and our Bible study begins Wednesday at 6 p.m. There is a women's meeting on this Friday at 6 p.m., uh, led by our very own Pastor Elois Duck. Amen. So we thank God for our announcements, and you're going to be hearing of another announcement that's going to come out regarding our council. Our council is going to begin October 23rd and 24th, which is a Friday and a Saturday, and it's a $10 registration uh, for our conference council, and we have two dynamic speakers that are going to be speaking that Friday night and that Saturday night. Uh, evangelist uh, Virginia Bowie, thank you Lord, very nationally known uh, speaker and uh, another uh, great speaker from Detroit, Michigan, uh, Pastor Dorian Cass, amen, dynamic, dynamic speakers and we're going to have dynamic uh, empowerment sessions during today, during the day, so you don't want to miss it, uh, Bible studies as well, it's going to be packed with empowerment and packed with preaching and teaching of the word of God. And we thank God that we're going to be um, the host church. And before you get all up in the tizzy, that don't mean you got to do anything. It's all virtual. <laughs> thank you, Lord. So I'll be here hosting it uh, live on Zoom. Thank you, Lord, as the council chairman. And we're going to ask our praise and our worship team to be with us on those days and let us... Uh, Get all that together as we uh, prepare ourselves to move forward in the Lord. Amen? Amen. Um, as, as that song says, can I get a little help from my friends? I'll get by if I can get a little help from who? My friends. Amen. And I know y'all my friends. <laughs> thank you, Jesus. Amen. So we certainly do thank God. Amen for this great service. And as we move now to our, our giving portion of the service and our tithes and our offerings, amen, as Pastor Duck says, it's blessing time. It's blessing time. And as uh, we prepare, I want to ask Deacon Fields to come forward. Um, God loves a cheerful giver. And he has commanded us to give and sow seed into his kingdom. Um, that's a part of your blessings. Um, that's where your blessings flow uh, through your giving. The scripture says it's more blessed to give than to receive. And when you give unto the Lord with a, a good heart, a cheerful heart, God will in turn bless you. And then also, too, we want to, um, we're coming up uh, up until October 1st. Um, our global missions department um, wants us to give our spare change 
Um, that's a bad word to use, spare change. Amen. Like you tipping God or something. Lord, forgive me for saying it like that. They want to, us to give, amen, our change um, to the hunger project. And what I know about uh, our global mission is that um, about 80% of what's collected goes toward the mission. And that other 20% um, just goes to keep the department going. So nobody's getting rich, and they're truly blessing people in foreign countries. Our Nipain States Council, we uh, collected enough to dig a well in Africa. So every time you know they have a, a bad water supply over there in Africa, and water's a great resource. So uh, Nipain States Council, we have a well over in Africa with our name on it. Amen. The, the Lord has blessed us. Amen. To help. And God wants us to be mindful of the poor. And God wants us to help those that are in need. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. So as we begin to stand and we begin to take up our offering, uh, Deacon Fields is going to go around first and then Sister Louise will follow behind him. Amen. Right after him, after he's finished. And then uh, give, give, sow seed into our global mission. I forgot to say, I want to say it because I'm proud of it. Uh, Sister Mother Louise Davis is our global mission leader here at Christian Ministries. <laughs> amen, amen, amen. Thank you, Lord. One day we want to wear our, I got, and see, I'm, I'm saying this because I want to do it. Uh, let us one day pick out a day wear our, our African gear. Amen. I got some, I, I bought me some African gear. And I want to wear it. So <laughs> I'll wear mine if you wear yours. Amen. So let us come in our dark shikis. Let us come uh, one day. Let us pick a Mother, Mother Louise, you pick a day. Amen. A Sunday. We'll call it Global Mission Day. And we'll wear our African gear. Amen. Y'all got some African gear? Y'all got some kente cloth? Amen. I know y'all do. I watch y'all on Facebook. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Amen. If you don't, buy some. Amen. Get yourself. So let the church stand. Gracious Father, in the name of Jesus, as we come around for this offering to sow seed, we ask you, Lord, that you bless each and every soul that is about to give to sow seed into your kingdom and use it 30, 60, and 100 fold. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Deacon Fields is going to come around first. And then Sister Louise will follow right behind them. Oh, 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 oh.
today hallelujah nothing just happens by chance nothing just happens by luck there's no such thing our God is every very very intentional amen and he's never failing amen we know that all things are working together for our good amen so he's an intentional God amen so never think that that thing that you're going through or whatever it is that you're in right now is not intentional. It has a direct purpose from God. Amen? Amen. Amen. I'd like to give honor this afternoon to my pastor, Bishop Frankie L. Quinn. Amen. Evangelist Arrington in her absence. And to each and every one of you. Amen? Amen. Thank God for our drummer this morning. Amen did a beautiful job amen beautiful job amen what a talent what a gift amen amen you know we used to look at specific things as a, a male or a female thing but that's not true anymore amen amen so don't think it's strange when you see a female in something that we we're used to seeing a male in amen amen let's give our praise team a hand they did a beautiful job this morning amen Amen, amen, amen. Father, we come before you in the mighty name of Jesus. We're asking, Lord, that you'll bless, Lord. Send your words and the anointing with your word, Lord. We're asking, Lord, that you'll let my spirit decrease, let yours increase, and invite our hearts into your word, Lord. Help us, Lord, to apply it to our hearts. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I'd like to invite your attention for a short while to the book of Matthew. Chapter 11. Matthew chapter 11. Thank you, Jesus. Matthew 11, I'm going to start reading at verse 28. It says, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. And I like to, the Lord gave me a thought to, today for it out of verse 29. Take my yoke. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Take my yoke, amen. This is a great invitation from the Lord. A welcome to all those that are weary with life. Sometimes we can do all the right things in life as Christians. 
and we still sometimes be at the end of our ropes. Amen? Jesus Christ is the only way a person can find rest for their soul. I know we've tried this and we've tried that and we've done this and we've done that. And when it really came back to it, we still had no answer to our problems, no answer to our solutions. So we finally just give up and call on Jesus. Amen. He's the only way a person can find rest to their soul. And here Christ's plea is, come unto me. And, and he's telling it to the people that all those that are weary, you're tired, if you're sick and tired of something and you see no way out, he says, come unto me because you're weary and you're heavy laden. And his promises to you is that you will find rest. Amen? When you come, there's certain things that we ourselves have to do. Amen? We have to yield our will, amen, because God's not going to come in unto us as long as we want to do what we want to do, because you're not here for what you want to do, but we are here for his purpose and his purpose only, amen. You have to drop your agenda, amen. A lot of us had agendas in our lives. We didn't have holiness in mind. We thought some of us might want to be dentists or lawyers or, or uh, some psychiatrists and, and all such as that. But God had another plan, has another plan in your life for you. Amen? We also have to turn ourselves towards God. Amen? Because he said, if you draw nigh to me, I'll draw nigh to you. Amen? And as we yield our will and drop our agendas, we will end up most of the time face to face with Jesus. Amen. There's no one else you can come face to face with. After you've done all you know to do, there's a thing that you have to do. You just have to stand. Amen. Stand anyhow. Amen. No matter what's going on in your life, just stand. Jesus is calling anyone, regardless of what you've done, or regardless of what you've left undone, he's still calling you. Oh, yeah, there's some things we leave undone when, when Jesus calls us. Amen? And sometimes that's why I say you have to yield your will because we're not ready to give up yet. There's still something we have to do. I don't know why in the world we as Christians think that we have time. Amen? We just seem to think that we have so much time. But... The question is, how much time do you have? When you ask a person that, they can't answer you because no one knows how much time that we have. Amen? When you're weary, you're physically and mentally tired and, and you're just fatigued. Uh, the per you're the person who just wants to get things right. Amen? You want to just keep on keeping on as best as you can. You're the one who smiles and says, all is well. Yet inside, you're at the wit's end. Amen? You're the one who just knows his or her life is in a complete mess. Amen? But you still won't give up to the Lord. You say, take my yoke upon you. You're heavy laden and you're burdened. When you're burdened, you got great worry. You're stressed out. You're being carried and weighed down. And, and sometimes you're just overloaded and oppressed with things that you really shouldn't be oppressed or overloaded with. Amen? But very rarely does Christ tell us to do something and does not give us a promise. Amen? He tells us to do something because there is a promise behind it. Amen? Amen? A yoke is usually made out of wood. I'm a country girl, so I used to see them all the time on the animals that they would put. They would put them across their necks, and, and it, it fit across their shoulders, or, or even a person who's using it. But with oxen, a yoke connects the animals to each other so that the, they get, whatever they're plowing or whatever they're pulling will get accomplished. Amen. I wonder what are we connected to this morning, amen? How, what are we yoked up to this morning? What are we pulling that we shouldn't be pulling, amen? What are we yoked up to, amen? God, Jesus said, my yoke is easy. 
The yokes that we're pulling sometimes are so heavy, amen? They're hard to be done, amen? It's the, the Bible says the way of a transgressor is hard, amen? That's because you have a yoke that has, has been yoked up to you that God didn't put on you, amen? And the purpose of a yoke is to harness the power of the animal or the person to do the work that's required of them. Anytime you get yoked by yourself or by another person, you have no help, amen? You have no help. There's nothing that you can do about that yoke, amen? You can pray, you can fast, you can, you can try and ask God to move it, but sometimes God, if he put that yoke on you, it's not going to be moved, amen? Because that yoke is there to move something in your life or to better you as a person, amen? Yokes are also used by people. You see in Africa how they have those yokes on their shoulders and they carry water. I mean buckets of water, amen? And, and yokes are also used to sometimes uh, move things out of our lives, amen? That's how God uses those type of yokes. Jesus puts those kind of yokes on you, but those yokes are easy, amen? Jesus offers us a yoke made by his own labor and love, made perfectly just for you and me, amen? And that's not all. He also offers himself as our partner in the yoke, amen? You know how it takes those two animals, amen, to carry and to plow or whatever? It also takes two when you're going through, amen? When you're in a situation and you see no way out, when you're going through something and you don't know who to call on, well, that when you're yoked up with Jesus, you got everything you need, amen? That's why he said, take my yoke upon you, amen? And learn of me. He said, you'll find that I'm meek and lowly, amen? I won't always... Uh, chastise you. I won't always harm you. I'm mild and soft. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm a merciful God. I show you mercy even when we don't deserve it. Amen. Jesus is the one who will help you bear that yoke. Amen. He'll help you pull that yoke. Amen. He'll help you carry whatever he has called you to do. Amen. He said, come unto me. Oh, you that labor and are heavy laden, that means you're oppressed about something, amen? That means you're in despair about something, amen? We are oppressed most of the time by materialism, amen? If we can get some folk to stop just buying cars, houses, sneakers, clothes. Some people got more sneakers than, than the store has, amen? Thank you, Jesus. We are oppressed by technology also, amen? We have so many of our children that are hooked on their phones, on the tablets, on the computers, amen? We're yoked up with this stuff now, and we're yoked up with per permissiveness, things that we allow to just go on in our lives, amen? But Jesus is inviting us today to come unto him, Amen. All of us that are heavy laden, he said, and he will give us rest. It's just a simple invitation. All we need to do is give up our burdens and give them to the Lord. Turn everything over to the Lord and he will help us. Amen. So why is it hard to do? Amen. Maybe it's because it's been instilled in us to be strong. Amen. You know how when you used to fall and your mother would say, get up and shut your mouth. Get up. Shut your mouth. Get on up. Brush your knees off. You're all right. We were taught to just be strong. Be independent. Don't cry. And men especially were taught that you shouldn't cry. But I'm here to tell you that Jesus wept. If he wept, it ain't nothing wrong with us weeping. Amen. Maybe another reason we don't turn our burdens over to the Lord is sometimes we might forget that he is there. We lose our focus, as someone said in Sunday school this morning. Amen? 
When you lose your focus on Jesus, then there, there's everything else in the world for you to just flop and flip around on. Amen? But Jesus said, take my yoke. <clears throat> take my yoke upon you. Amen? Most of the time in our lives on every side, there's something we're dealing with. There's tension. There's t t turmoil. Excuse me, my throat's closing up a little. There's fights in the mind. There's war. And there's us dealing with things in the world. Amen? But right in the middle of it all, there's a mighty fortress, which I call the peace of God. Amen? That's there through faith in Jesus Christ. It's always there to lead you back to the yoke that Jesus put on you. Amen? When Jesus told his disciples his way was easy, <laughs> And, and can you imagine all the things they had been going through just for talking about Jesus? All the things they had to put up with just for preaching that, that Jesus was the Son of God? All the things that they put up with. He, they, Jesus said, it's easy. It's easy in a sense of requiring no effort. But you know what? This requires a great deal of mental concentration and discipline. As long as you keep your mind stayed on him, he'll keep you in perfect peace. That's not a yoke. That's easy. It, that's easy to do. But how, why can't we keep our mind stayed on him? Because we always have some kind of distraction. Amen? There are rigors. And for those of you who don't know what rigors are, that sudden feelings of cold shivers sometimes. When we hear what we have to do. Uh, 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 in, in Christian discipline. Amen? Yes. We don't want to do those things. That's why we just shiver sometimes. But it is easy when the concentration and the discipline is, is applied. All we have to do is make up our mind, I'm going to do this. We think victory is so hard, but victory is so easy. Amen? Because victory is nothing but a decision. Victory is I'm going to stop. The scripture tells us to just quit like men. Quit. Once you find out something is wrong, just stop. Quit it. Repent. And turn from that thing. And do what's right. Don't just give up. Weariness is the only requirement we receive, how, how we receive Christ's rest. When you get so sick and tired of yourself, that's the, that's, that's the requirement here, if you want his yoke, amen? All you have to do is just get sick and tired of yourself. And you know, we can get sick and tired of everything, but we never get sick and tired of ourselves until we just get down to the bottom of the barrel, so to speak. We get down to the very end, and then we call on Jesus, amen? He said, come on now, take my yoke. You're sad, but if you take my yoke, I'll make you happy. You're sad, but if you take my yoke, I'll give you joy. You're hating folk, but if, if you take my yoke, I'll give you love. You're, you're, you're just bamboozled right now. But if you take my yoke, I'll regulate your mind. Jesus give us some very odd exchanges, amen? We don't deserve the exchanges. Oh, hallelujah. When you're in sorrow, he makes you glad. Uh, the scripture lets us know that we're going to weep because weeping may endure for a night. He said in his favor is life. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy is coming in the morning. Thank you, Jesus. Being yoked to something we need to let go of is the only requirement. Of letting Jesus give us a new yoke. His yoke. Tailor made just for you. Tailor made just for me. We got to quit fighting and start and stop wrestling with the word of God. That's what make our yokes hard. Amen. When we don't have no other way out. We don't see no other way out sometimes. We still go and take a yoke that we shouldn't take. 
Instead of getting on our knees and praying to the Lord, Lord, how do I get out of this? He said, if any man lack wisdom, let him ask of God, who upbraideth not. He won't turn you away. David said, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Take the yoke. We done tried everything else. We try everything but the yoke. We got to be yoked up with the word, amen? That's your yoke. If you get yoked up with the word of God, it'll always be easy. Because you'll realize, if I do this, God said he's going to do that. There's a promise in it. There's a promise in it. If you realize that the Lord is your shepherd and you shall not want, You'll start to yoke up with that. Amen? If you realize that he said, I would have fainted had I not seen the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Amen? Look around you. You got a great cloud of witnesses of things that God has done for people, things that God has brought people out. But we still yoke ourselves up unnecessarily. Hallelujah. He said, when you go through the waters, I'll be there with you. When you, when the rivers, when you get to the rivers, he said, you can go through them. I ain't going to let them overflow you. He said, and when you walk through the fire, I'm not going to let it burn you. These tests and trials that you're going through, you're in the waters, amen. But he said, I'll be with thee. I'm going to be with you. I ain't going to leave you by yourself. I'm going to walk with you. If you take my yoke. He said in the rivers. They're going to come up over you. and say, But they ain't going to overflow you. And you're going to walk through some fire sometimes. It's going to seem like you're in the fiery furnace. Just like the Hebrew boys were. He said but the fire won't burn you. Hallelujah. Look at how easy his yoke is. If you just take it. He said my burden is light. You know why your burdens will be light when you give them to Jesus? When you take that yoke? Because he'll help you carry them. Amen? Hallelujah. Of ourselves, we can't carry nothing. We, of ourselves, we can do nothing, he said, without him. He said, in my father's house are many mansions. So let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God. Believe also in me. Hallelujah. Take his yoke. You don't have to wrestle with things anymore. He said, my peace, I leave with thee. Hallelujah. He says, and I'm going to give you joy. Abundant joy. Don't walk around with your head hanging down all the time. He said, lift up your bow down head and strengthen your feeble knees. That's taking on his yoke. Hallelujah. Even when you don't feel like it. Take it on and put it on anyway. Hallelujah. You can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. All things. You have to tell yourself, I can do this thing. I can do this thing. And the more you tell yourself that, that yoke gets easier and easier. Amen. But you got to be yoked up with Jesus. I can't think of anybody else that I'd rather be yoked up with other than him. Hallelujah. All my burdens, all my problems, he's able to help me solve them. Amen? The wisdom from above, it's not sensual. Hallelujah. It's heavenly wisdom. So you got to seek him. He says, seek the kingdom and its righteousness first. And all these things that you've been desiring, all these things you've been asking God for, they'll be added unto you. Hallelujah. All these problems that you have that you can't seem to solve. Take it to Jesus. Don't put that yoke on yourself. Say, Lord, you told me to bring it to you. You told me that you would. I, 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 I'm suffering now, Lord, because all these needless pains that I'm carrying right now, all these things I'm bearing, I don't have to bear it. I can just take it to you in prayer. Amen. 
Hallelujah. Take my yoke. Forget the yoke of your friend. Some of us is yoked with people, amen? Sally Sue might have you yoked. Got to let Sally Sue go. Pookie might have you yoked. Got to let Pookie go. Jesus said, take my yoke. Amen? And Jesus' promises, they're not, they're, they're sure promises. You can count on it. They've been proven and they can't be changed. If you don't believe it, talk with some of the old folk. You'll see how many things they've gone through. How many promises the Lord has made for them. And how many that he brought out. Oh, I wish I'd have kept the journal from when I first cried out a father. Of the things that he brought me through. So that I could always look back. Amen? And see what the Lord has done. Look, you ought to count your many blessings. See what the Lord has done. He's done great things in our lives. All because you took his yoke. Amen? So he can make things easy for us. Hallelujah. He said, pray without ceasing. If you pray without ceasing, when things come upon you, it'll be easy for you to go through. Because why? You've been in the presence of God. And he knew what you would be going through. And he said, I'll make a way out of no way. Just give it to me. Why can't we just give things to the Lord? I don't know. It looks like we love to be yoked up sometimes with our difficulties, with our problems. And you know why I think that? Because sometimes I make God my last resort. Amen? I try to get out of it myself. I try to work it out. I try to do it. And then when I see after all I done done, after all the money I done spent, I said, no, I should have turned that over to the Lord. You know why? Because his yoke said, in all thy ways acknowledge him. And he'll direct your paths. Amen? In all of them, not some of them. Oh, we'll ask God about certain things, Lord. Should, should I buy this house? Lord, should I do this? But we don't ask, Lord, Lord, should I go here? Lord, should I do that? Lord, should I... Should I be doing this right now in my life? Show me, Lord, where should I be in my life right now? Lord, why am I feeling the way I do? Why am I so yoked up like I am? Because you didn't take his yoke. You said, take my yoke. Hallelujah. Take my yoke upon thee and learn of him. Everything we do in Christ, everything we go through in Christ, it's a learning experience. It's a teaching moment. And if you don't get anything out of the lesson, that shows that you don't, you're not taking the yoke on. You've got to get something out of everything that you go through. Whether it's good, whether it's bad. Everything we go through, everything that we do, everything that we say, we have to realize there's a consequence. And it's either going to be a good consequence or a bad consequence. But I hear him saying obedience is better than sacrifice. Amen? So always obey the word of God. Anytime you get into something and you got to think about should you do it or not, you shouldn't do it. Because if it's a yoke of the Lord, it'll just say, yeah, go ahead. But if you got to think about it over and over and over, rehearsing it in your mind day after day, it's not worth it. Let it go. When we decide to take on the yoke of Christ, we don't know that's, that's one of the best decisions in our lives, to take on his yoke. And let go of our yokes. Amen? And your yokes are usually coming from your own will. Things that you want to do. Things that you're not ready to lay aside yet. You're not ready to put down yet. Paul said, when I want to do good, evil is always present. 
I know you want to do what's right most of the time. And all of us do. But even when we want to do right sometimes, we still do wrong. Why? Because it's always present, evil. That's why we have to learn to take his yoke and not our own. God has been too good to us for us to start turning back now. It ain't no time to turn back. As we see the day approaching, he said for us to girdle up the loins of our minds. And that's a yoke that's part of Jesus' yoke. Girdling up the loins of our mind. Putting on the whole armor of God. Letting go of things that we should let go of. And let God have his way in our lives. My, my, my. I, I think back sometimes on my lives, some of the things that I thought were so hard. But I thought to myself, the only reason it was hard, it was because I didn't want to let it go. But as soon as I surrendered to the will of God, it became so easy to let it go. And you look back over your life and you reminisce and you say, wow, I wish I'd have known what I know now then. It would have been so easy just to get the victory just like that. Because like I said, victory is a decision. Anybody ever remember your mother telling you when you tell your mother, I can't do that. And my mother would look at me and say, you don't know what you can do until you try it. She said, you, all you got to do is set your mind. Make up in your mind that you're going to do it and you can do it. Same with holiness. All you got to do is make up in your mind, you're going to walk with the Lord. And the enemy can't, do, he can't trick you. Oh, he'll come and he'll give you a lot of suggestions. Amen. But he can't, he can't just, he'll, he'll even knock you down sometimes. But you're able to get up again. Amen. See, failure don't come by you, him knocking you down or knocking you out. It comes when you just stay there, lay down. When you stay down. But a righteous man falleth seven times, but he gets back up again. Amen? Hallelujah. There was a song say, we fall down, but we get up. Yeah, you have to get right back up again. Amen? Because remember, you're yoked. You're a prisoner. You're no longer your own. You've been bought with a price. Amen? And once you realize that you've been bought with a price and you're no longer your own, then you take up the yoke of Christ. And he promises to give you rest. Amen. Then and only then will you have rest. Hallelujah. Your friends can't give you rest. Mother can't give you rest. Father can't give you rest. Even bishop sometimes can't give you rest. He can preach the word to you. But you hear it and you're good. All right. You walk out of those doors and you go home. And you're in the same state that you were in when you left. That's why you've got to take on his yoke. He said, take my yoke. Just take it. I, I'm, I'm handing it out here. It's, it's stretched out to you. Just take it. He said, the day you hear, he said, don't harden your heart. The day you hear about me, the day you hear this word, then just take it. Take it and walk in it. Amen. Holiness is a vocation, saints. Amen? It is a vocation. It's really more important than your job. Than your pay, money paying job. Amen? Because there's nothing we can do sometimes but go to Jesus. The situations we, that come in our lives, the problems that we have sometimes with our families, the sicknesses, the diseases, all we can do is go to Jesus. So that's why he said, take my yoke. Because we know that St. John 9, 31 says, we know that God don't hear sinners pray. But if he be a seeker of God, if you seek in God, him will he hear. Amen. God will hear you if you call on him. If you turn. Amen. Hallelujah. So don't go out of here today. I don't want to see anyone leave today. Without taking his yoke. Amen. 
Let your will go. Let your desire go. Let your agenda go. You don't really have an agenda. Because over there it says, we read it in Sunday school this morning. God says, I know the thoughts that I think towards you. He said, I, I, they're thoughts of peace. I don't want to harm you. Not of evil. God just wants to take every one of us to our expected end. Amen. And I'm expecting to go to New Jerusalem. I don't know about y'all. Amen. But I'm so looking forward to it. Somebody, I heard somebody say, I'm tired of this world. Amen. And the way things are going now, I can almost say I'm tired too. You're almost ready. I'm, re I'm really ready to go home. Amen. This is not your home. We're just sojourners through here, pilgrims. Amen. If you're in the kingdom of God, this is not your home. So Jesus said, take my yoke. So don't leave here today unless you take his yoke. Hallelujah. Amen. And you'll learn of him. And you'll find that Jesus is not a hard person at all. Amen. Very good person to take a yoke after. Amen. I would love being just like Jesus. Sometimes I hear people saying, I, I want to be just like you when I grow up. Or, or, or they tell another person, I want to be just like you when I grow up. But you don't, you don't, do you want to go through the, all the things that individual went through? Better be careful what you ask for. You might get it. You want to be just like that person? Then you got to go through everything that that person has been through. Amen? I want to be just like Jesus. But I'm not like Paul. I don't want to know him in the power of his resurrection. <laughs> no. I don't, I don't care if I be wrestled out of the grave. But if I die, I want to be wrestled out of the grave. But I would love to be raptured. I would love the feeling of being raptured. Amen? Amen. So I, I took that yoke just to be raptured. Amen? Hallelujah. And there's people that I want to see that I have questions that I want to ask. Amen? I want to see Enoch. I want to know what was his testimony that he pleased God so that God just translated him and he didn't see death. Hallelujah. That's after I see Jesus, amen? Yeah, they say we're going to tell them all about our troubles and we're going to uh, shout and all that. You ain't going to think about your troubles when you see Jesus, amen? <laughs> You're going to be so glad to be where he is. Like they say, I want to be where he is. I really want to be where he is. Pray my strength in the Lord. Praise the Lord, everybody. Amen. And the way to go into his yoke, the Bible says for us to be buried with him in baptism. Amen. To take on that newness of life. Amen. If there's anyone here that wants to be baptized in the name of Jesus, all you have to do is just raise your hand. We got water to baptize you in and we got clothes for you to change into. And if you repent fully, God said in his word that he would fill you with the precious gift of the Holy Ghost. Amen. And I, I love that preached word that she preached, especially when she started talking about the exchanges. Uh, he said, his yoke is easy and his burden is light. He wants you to exchange your yoke for his yoke. Uh, and his yoke doesn't compare to, uh, your yoke doesn't compare to the yoke that he will give unto you. Because he said his yoke is easy and his burden is light. Amen. Amen. So come on, just give God a praise. I know we don't want to belabor the hour. Amen. But we certainly do thank God for his goodness and his mercy and all of his grace and his wonderful acts that he has shown toward the children of men. Amen. So I just have one more announcement and then we'll move on with our service and then go forward to this mission. Amen. We want to ask Sister Amanda and Brother uh, Maurice if they would stand up. Amen. And they, they slipped away there and went to Niagara Falls and got married. Amen. Amen. So we certainly do want to congratulate them on their marriage. And we thank God 
for, uh, I didn't see her over there, but I saw her when she came in, uh, the Brother Maurice's uh, mother. Amen. What's your first name again? I forgot. And your last name? Sylvia Tequet. Amen. Our Jamaican sister. Amen. Yeah, man. Amen. And you know, we had... We had a Jamaican brother here the other day. We got a Jamaican sister. We we world renowned now. <laughs> we international. Thank you, Lord. That's like the body of Christ, ain't it? Amen. Amen. We certainly do thank God for you. All right. We want to ask the saints to stand. And Sister Paige, we want to thank you. Amen. For playing, playing with us, enhanced it. Amen. Uh, you know, my wife, when she cooks sometimes, she likes to use some accent. An accent, give it a little bit more flavor. Amen. We want to thank you for the flavor. Amen. So um, as we get ready to dismiss, remember our Bible study. It's Wednesday at 6. And um, also the women's meeting Friday at 6. And right now we want to turn you back over into the hands of Pastor Duck so she can pray and dismiss us. Oh, all right. Amen. With uplifted hands. Gracious Father, in the name of Jesus, we certainly do pray that you bless us here on today. And we ask you, Lord, that you bless our beloved dear sister. Give her strength in her body. Send forth the anointing. And, Lord, we thank you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. She wasn't feeling well today, but she pressed her way through it. So y'all pray for her that the Lord will touch her body. With uplifted hands, one Lord, one faith, one baptism. In Jesus' name, amen.